Let me set the mood for you. It's 1 a.m. You're playing an indie classic. You have no responsibilities tomorrow. Rain softly falls against the window. You allow yourself to be fully absorbed in the game. All notifications off. All things that could bother you far away. You're just enjoying the atmosphere, soaking in the unique presentation. You allow your mind to wander. Exploring these surreal dream environments is lulling you into a flow state. To wander the dream plane, yeah, this, this is right. This is what I've always done. This is what I always will do. I am in my right place. I'm flourishing. I'm relaxed. It's here, when you're exposed and vulnerable, that the intrusive thoughts will strike. In a moment of weakness, a sinister idea crosses your mind. Perhaps this concept isn't entirely yours. Perhaps it's a primordial and immortal machination of another realm that lives in the minds of the naive and unaware. Nevertheless, whatever its source, the ominous musing worms its way into your mind. While you blissfully could vote from nightmare to dream in the land of Morpheus, it happens. You think. Yeah, Yume Nikki is great, but what if it was remade in 3D for the modern audience? You have fallen for the trap. This evil contemplation is a ruin. Why take something beautiful and change it? What hubris it is to see something wonderful and imagine you can improve it. Such folly it is to see Michelangelo's Pietà, a sculpture that has brought tears to those that experienced it for 500 years and think, yeah, but wouldn't it be better if we updated it? Well, dear viewer, unfortunately of this sin, I am also guilty. And that's why this isn't a video about Yume Nikki, but rather... It's impossible or perhaps incorrect to discuss this game in a void. The only reason this game is here is because of the original. It's not a sequel, not a remake, and not quite a reimagining either. It only exists as some sort of accessory, so going forward I'll do my best to talk about the game's merits while placing them in the context of the original. Now, for the viewers that don't know, let me briefly provide that context. Yume Nikki 2004 might best be described as a dream exploration walking simulator. It was basically just dumped on the internet by the creator Kikiyama. The true identity of the creator is still unknown, as they have remained enigmatic and mysterious in the time since the game's release. In the game you play as Merotsuki. She appears to be a young girl that will not or cannot leave her tiny apartment. Gameplay is a simple loop. Merotsuki goes to sleep. She then explores the dream world looking for effects, new abilities that augment her ability to explore. She then wakes up. And that's really all there is. You sleep, dream, explore, then go explore more with any new effects you may have found. The only real goal of the game is to collect all of the effects. The visuals and the characters in the game are bizarre, and there's no real narrative. But how the game moved around and gained notoriety on the internet is almost as important as the game itself. After its release, the game slowly made its way around by word of mouth on the internet. Now, you have to remember this is the Wild West internet days. There was no data mining, there was no YouTube walkthroughs. You'd see some guy in a forum say, Hey, I found this new effect by doing X. If you do this, this nightmare creature appears over here. So, over time the secrets of the game are slowly unraveled. The strange characters get crowdsourced nicknames, the world is mapped, the maze is solved. The lack of a strong narrative makes room for endless speculation on what exactly the story is. People argue with each other about which creatures represent what abstract concepts. It's chaos. Adding to the mysterious nature of the game, it was consistently updated for several years, adding more and more worlds, effects, and characters for people following the game to continually discover and obsess over. Nowadays, you can go watch someone do a full playthrough in just more than an hour, but back then things were quite different. Anyway, if you do want to know more about the original game, there's a million videos out there and the theories surrounding it. Go check them out if you want. And if you want my personal theory, you gotta stick around to the end. Back to the game at hand. So, basically the concept of the game was, okay, Humanity is great, let's make it 3D and shitty and call it a day. And I fell for it. When this was announced I was ecstatic. Supposedly I had input from the original creator, so what reason did I have the doubt? A fully fleshed out remake of Yume Nikki, but in 3D? I can explore the dreamscape worlds I love so much, but in another dimension? What a whole dimension extra? What a bargain! 
Sadly, as you may have surmised by now, it doesn't exactly hold up to the brilliance of the original game. But, does it suck? Well, dear viewer, I certainly thought it sucked when I started making this video. Now, I originally purchased this game the day it came out, and I will tell you without a doubt that it sucked then. The state the game was in at the original release was terrible. I think I barely put two hours in, despite my excitement leading up to its debut. Then, once a year for the next however many years it's been, I would attempt to get through it, and I failed every single time. However, as I am an honest prophet, I couldn't just make a video about how this game sucked without finishing it. Before making this, I was determined to complete the game, and to be honest, I was dreading it. I thought to myself, I would rather construct a makeshift tuxedo out of sandpaper, run a marathon in it, and then take a victory bath in hot sauce than play this game. But because integrity is important to me, I drug myself through it. And... well, it wasn't that bad. Let's dig in. Gameplay. So, the original game is essentially nothing but walking and exploring. This game wants to take it to the next level. In the discussion of this game, one of the words I've seen tossed around a lot is gamify. And I think that's a cute word and a pretty apt description of what happened. Puzzles are introduced and for some reason Madutsuki can jump now, so they put platforming in. The effects are more like real abilities, you might earn in a metroidvania type game, there's a forced stealth section, there's sequences where you're getting chased, blah blah blah. A moderate amount of work has been put into updating the simple gameplay of the original into a more satisfying and complete video game. And for this, I will commend the devs. Some of the stuff works better than others, however. Most of the puzzles are just fetch quests or trade quests, take this item here, give it to this guy, take that item to someone else, etc. There's a few musical puzzles too, I guess kind of like Ocarina of Time, they're fine. The more unique puzzles are fine too, I guess. Overall, nothing amazing, but also nothing terrible. Oh, they put the pyramid in, let's go! However, while some of these ideas might have been good in concept, it's difficult to praise the game here because it controls very poorly. Your character feels very sticky and just slow to respond to your inputs. The platforming feels gross, and I cannot believe how long the animation is to pull up from a ledge. Everything you do has some sort of input lag, which leads to the game just feeling very loose. It's not super important, as there's only a few sequences where you actually need to execute precise commands, but those sections are going to feel like complete garbage when they come around. Another quibble I have about the gameplay is that despite possibly the main selling point of this game being 3D exploration, a lot of this game is a 2D platformer. There's very few places where you just get to explore a big area with lots of sea. A lot of the game will just be walking left and right, which is a bizarre direction to take the game in. Besides that, there's a bunch of collectibles and concept art scattered around in addition to the effects you can find. It gives you something to do, and it's, it's mildly satisfying to collect all of it. Overall, if you had to gamify the original, there's definitely worse ways you could do it. However, I'm not sure it had to be done at all. This is probably the biggest point of contention right here. Should this just have been a straight 3D remake of the original changing nothing? Is this a fine attempt at modernizing? Are the efforts made in this game a waste, but they could have been better if taken even further? I'm afraid I may not have the answers to these questions, and you'll probably just have to decide for yourself according to your own tastes. Wait, game type? What, what do you mean? I thought you just went over all the gameplay stuff. Well, yes, dear viewer, but Dream Diary goes in hard on the horror aspect of gameplay. Those gamified elements I was telling you about earlier? Well, a lot of them are horror-based. You evade the laser eyes of evil spirits, you run from monsters, you avoid being obliterated by a lighthouse, you have chase sequences, you try not to get eaten by other monsters, etc. Now, I'm not necessarily saying these elements are bad. I love horror. I'm just not sure the original is a straight-up horror game. There are definitely elements of fear, but in my opinion, horror has as much a place in the world of the sleeping as pleasant dreams do. I think the original game is equal parts pleasant dream, nightmares, and just bizarre. Now, clearly the public will disagree with me on this, as the tags on Steam describe the OG as psychological horror. Now, I will admit here that maybe not everyone is going to react the same way as I do to the original game. I find it to be extremely relaxing and immersive. 
But despite the fact that I acknowledge it's not going to be a comfy game for everyone, the tone of Dream Diary feels off. Tone can be difficult to quantify with words, but the world of Dream Diary seems to be a tad more openly hostile, which in turn creates a harsher, more negative vibe of the game overall. Personally, I don't care for this change, because as I said, I don't think it's being faithful to the original. But maybe it'll work for some people, as there are clearly different opinions on this matter. Uh, they're serviceable, I guess. To be honest, there's not a whole lot in this game that makes me think, Wow, I sure am impressed with how that transitioned to 3D. The visuals get the job done, they're cohesive, they throw in some of the more noteworthy parts of the original, but as I mentioned, it's mostly just fan service. there's no real wow factor. I guess it's here that I should mention that there's a huge reduction in the number of locations. The strange thing is, there's locations and stuff made specifically for this game. The inclusion of new elements and the exclusion of old stuff has led to the emergence of a meta-theory to explain this. Some people have speculated this game was going to be a more generic horror title, perhaps set in a school like all the other horror games, but that might have been before the studio acquired the rights to Yumi Nikki. Once the rights were acquired, the studio hastily switched gears and repurposed old assets to fit the style and setting of a dream world. Why do I specify the school setting? Well, one of Dream Diary's larger worlds is a school, a strange emphasis which you're not going to find in the original game. It's pretty good. A lot of droning tracks that are contributing more towards the ambiance than being catchy or memorable. You're probably not going to be checking out the tracks after you're done playing this game, but that's not exactly what the music in a game of this nature is supposed to do. The music is just one jigsaw piece of a larger puzzle, and the completed picture is an immersive game? I don't know, I sort of lost track of the metaphor on that one, so let me just segue into what I want to talk about next, which is... So, this is actually the main aspect of the game that I can unreservedly say is well done. Again, I won't say that it hits the same tone as the original, but the game absolutely presents a cohesive and convincing atmosphere. And it delivers this atmosphere pretty seamlessly. You can be running away from eyeballs in one scene, and then be peacefully platforming in a geometric void in an X without too much whiplash. I think without all of the elements of the atmosphere supporting it, the game might not work at all. So I will say that the visuals, music, and gameplay all come together decently well in terms of atmosphere. Alright, so I had like another three pages of notes for the story section, but you know what? It's kind of been done. If you want to see theories on the original's ending, there's a million videos out there you can go watch. But fair warning, it's pretty grim. A lot of adult subject matter, so if you're sensitive to that kind of stuff, steer clear. However, I do want to talk about this game's story, so spoilers ahead, I guess. Maybe skip here. So, bizarrely, this game opens with the previous game's end. Marutsuki literally sees the ending of the previous game and is startled awake. But who was the dreamer? The one we play as or the one from the original? Hmm. So, some stuff that happens in the school might lend believability to previous theories, but I won't get into that here. What I'm mostly interested in is this. You know earlier when I said this wasn't a sequel exactly? Well, what if it was? Now, I know you can't really call a game that's 80% just a 3D version of an older game a sequel, but what if just the story part is a sequel taking place after the events of the original? It literally opens with the close, which seems like an enormous hint to me. Okay, so the ending of this game is an escape sequence from a mysterious shadow tormentor. Marutsuki escapes a dream version of the apartments and arrives upon the room of doors. Every door vanishes except for the one returning to her apartment. She bursts in and collapses, completely exhausted but apparently safe. She reawakens, startled, but something's different this time. She's really awake, like it's sunny outside, the weather has changed. She examines the sunny day outside on the balcony and then opens the exit to her apartment to what appears to be the real world. The game ends with a fade to white from the light coming from the door. So what the hell? Is this a happy ending? Well, I'm not sure. Upon obtaining this ending, you'll get a Steam achievement entitled Wake Up with a subtext, A New Day Begins. Now let's talk about the alternate ending real quick. The alternate ending of the game is obtained by finding all the jellyfish. Sekon Masada-sensei beams you up into his ship. Here, Marutsuki will fall asleep in the spacecraft, triggering an achievement called 
the dream goes on, and the credits will roll on this alternate end. So, to me, this seems to lock in the theory that the jellyfish are tied to the dream world, and the jellies being in the ending of the previous game indicate that sequence was still in a dream? I believe there's too much evidence to discount this now. The jellies are literally how you unlock the ending that culminates in the achievement, the dream goes on. So, does that mean in the normal ending she's really waking up? Well, I can't say for certain, but that is my theory. I think that this game is a reframing of the events of the original. Perhaps, after all these years, Kikiyama didn't like the sour note the original ends on, and wanted to use this game as a reframing device? In my opinion, this game recontextualizes the original and gives it a new ending. An ending in which Maratsuki is able to escape and be free of whatever the dream world and the creatures therein may represent. Now, whatever all that stuff means is still completely open to interpretation, but that's my theory. This game represents a new or recontextualized ending. Oh, no, wait, I got another one. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. What a thrill. With darkness and silence through the night. What a thrill. So, is this game burning hot garbage pulled from the dumpster outback of the Surströming factory? Ah! Nah. Although I maintain this game is terrible upon release, it's, in its current state, passable. Is it a good game? Nah, not really either. It's in a sort of bizarre place where it's only really for fans of the original, but that's also the group it's most likely to piss off. If you're a mega fan of the original, you've probably already played stuff like Yumi Tsuki and Dot Flow, but if you're really desperate for like 6 to 10 hours of content, you might consider this game. Alright, the end is nice, so I'm gonna party hardy with this cat. Thanks for watching.